Library databases can sometimes connect you to professional resources faster than you can find through Google. For starters, all of our resources you find through our databases have already been evaluated. Plus, they can make APA or MLA citations for you automatically. To get into our databases, we're going to start at the library's homepage. You can always get there by typing in www.kellogg.edu slash library or you'll find links to the library through the campus web pages and through the portal. Once you get to the library's website, um, you can go under the Articles tab, and there's lots of ways to get into the databases. Today we're going to click on Search Article Databases. And then these are our different big three vendors. We're going to choose EBSCO. Now EBSCO Now, EBSCO makes a variety of different database products. Each different database here pulls from a different set of journals, magazines, and newspaper articles. Normally, I would suggest choosing ERIC. It has tons of articles related to um, educational topics. However, right now, ERIC is having some issues with full text. Until they are resolved, I'm going to recommend choosing Academic Search Elite and Teacher Reference Center. Check those boxes and click on Continue. If you are off campus, a screen will pop up and ask for your KID number and password, just like you're signing into the portal. If you have any problems, please call the library 965-4122 or email me frostk at kellogg.edu. I'm going to start my search using autism. I'm not going to select any of the fields here. I found over 11,000 results. It's important when you're doing this kind of search to add words like education or early childhood education. Now I found 447 different results. Getting better. There's lots of different ways to narrow your results down. All of these check boxes at the side can be super helpful to narrow your search. Like I'm going to pick autistic children and education. Now when I choose one of these subject searches, it adds it to my search. And now I only have 44 results. So anytime an article looks interesting, now for any articles that look interesting, you can always click on a title and that will take you to this detailed record view. Here I can see more about the article authors, where it comes from, a list of hyperlinked subject terms that librarians have kind of tagged all these articles with. You could click on one of these and redo my search. I can also read an abstract, a little bit about the article, a kind of summary. This does not count as the full article. Instead, in order to get to this article, I have to open what's called the full text, PDF full text just means a scanned in version of this article. Here I can see the article and there's also tools on the right hand side including a tool for citation. So this article looks pretty good. I'm going to add it to a temporary folder. It takes it up here to save it for later. Let's go back to my results list and this next article there is no PDF full text. Instead, I can link for full text. Now, sometimes you'll find the article will open right away, or you'll need to follow some links in order to eventually get to the full text of the article. Sometimes articles, when you link for full text, we do not have them in full text at our library. In that case, you would need to fill out an interlibrary loan form, and it can take up to two weeks to get the article. For this particular assignment, I would recommend sticking to articles that do have the full text behind them. Once you find one article that looks promising, you can also redo a search by clicking on these subject terms. You can see this redid my search and found other words that have as a subject listing autistic children in education. Now I'm to 394 different results. 
I may want to add some extra subject listings here. 280 results. And so now I can add any of these articles that have full text to my folder. Now, the folder stores articles temporarily. I can go to my folder view. And now these articles, I can open up the full text. You will need to find two articles for use in this exercise. I've added these articles to a temporary folder. And I can see the full text of an article by clicking on PDF full text or the HTML full text. Clicking on the title of an article opens up the detailed record where I can see all those subject term tags and an abstract. Now from this detailed record view, I can also open up a citation of the article. Here I can grab an APA or an MLA citation. I'm going to copy and paste this MLA citation into a Word document. Now let's do the second one. We're going to click on the title to open up the detailed record, click on Cite, scroll down to get to the MLA All right, citation. I've copy and pasted these two citations into my Word document but I will need to correctly format them. So they need to be in Times New Roman, 12 point font, under paragraph, I can also tell them that I do not want any indentation over here on this side, and instead I want them to be a hanging indent. And I want my line spacing to be double. This looks better. I will also want to make sure these are alphabetized. So they are in correct ABC order by um, the author's last name. Now it's important when you're grabbing a citation from a database that you double check this using um, the MLA handbook or the APA handbook or sites that are recommended on our citation guide. Sometimes these um, automatic citation tools will incorrectly capitalize. So here is my works cited page. If you want, I am going to correctly format an APA citation. All right, now I'm going to format an APA citation. So I'm back at the folder view. I'm going to open up the detailed record of this article and now choose cite and here I'm going to add my grab my APA references copy and paste it into a Word document and I'm gonna go grab the other one I'm gonna grab my second document clicking on the title opens up the detailed record there I can grab the citation here's APA copy and paste it into Word. Now I just need to format. I'm going to highlight it, choose Times New Roman, 12 point, under paragraph, I can fix all my indents. Let's see, I want this to be set at zero. I want it to be a hanging indent and the line spacing to be double. And now I can put them in alphabetical order, which they already are. And I will want to double check and make sure the capitalization and everything is correct. And then write references at the top. Center that. And now I've created my um, references page. So whether you're using APA and create a references page, so whether you are creating a references page in, M in APA or a works cited page in MLA, you can use these citation tools to help you create these citations. 
Now I'm going to read through these articles um, using the PDF full text or HTML full text links and then I'm going to write a quick paragraph and provide one example of a direct quote and one example of a paraphrase.